This show brought to you by... Do you have a butt kicker or transducer that's not getting the job done? Is it shaking to just the low end sounds? What if it shook when it was supposed to? SimVibe is an advanced multi-dimensional audio based feedback software that utilizes one to eight bass transducers and provides the correct physics based vibrations throughout your simulator. This can greatly enhance immersion and drivability. All you need is one shaker, an extra sound card, and SimVibe software. To check it out for yourself, go to simexperience.com and then click on products and then SimVibe. Welcome to Inside Sim Racing, I'm Darren Ganji, and are you looking for a way to attach an aftermarket rim to your Thrustmaster base, whether it's a T500, T300 RS, or a TX? Well, I have three different options for you here, and actually gonna talk about a fourth as well, but I don't have that one available. And uh, hopefully when I'm all done, you'll have the information that you need to attach an aftermarket rim to your Thrustmaster base as well. I have the Derek Spear Designs Quick Attach Wheel Adapter, the Sim Racing Hardware GTE Adapter, and a Sam Maxwell Customs Setup. All three adapters allow you to attach any aftermarket rim that uses a 70 millimeter hexagonal bolt pattern. Examples include Momo, Sparco, OMP, or some Chinese knockoffs of the major, far more expensive brands, and actually, I have a few of those here. So I have a Momo Mod 27 for the Sam Maxwell Designs setup. I have an NRG Deep Dish 350 millimeter rim for the Derek Spear Designs adapter. And then I have this Genesis GA 3161 290 millimeter rim that I'm using for the uh, Sim Racing Hardware GTE adapter. And then finally, I have a fourth rim that I'm not using yet, but I'll tell you about that project when I'm done. All four are wrapped in suede, by the way, as well. The Derek Spear Designs version comes with six screws to attach your wheel and will ship anywhere in the world for $39.75 US dollars. The Sim Racing Hardware GTE adapter requires you to take the rim off of your Thrustmaster 458 GT Italia and then use the adapter and reattach a wheel uh, so that you can use the stock buttons and paddle shifters. It goes for $24.90 British pounds plus an additional $4.95 to ship in the UK, $8.95 in Europe, and $9.95 here in the US. And with the current exchange rate, that puts the cost at just under $52 to get it to my door here in the US. Then I have the Sam Maxwell Custom T500 plate assembly and that originally retailed for about $249. I ended up buying it secondhand off of our forums and I'll get to that in a few minutes as well. Uh, but it's electronically and mechanically compatible with the Thrustmaster bases. It has 13 functions available plus the paddles, so 15 total. Mine has two rotary encoders, a toggle switch, and six additional buttons. The only thing that you lose is the D-pad, so you wouldn't be able to use this setup on the consoles. As a matter of fact, you can't use any of these setups on the consoles. This you could, and I'll talk about that in a, in a few minutes as well. None of these require a separate USB connection, but Sam Maxwell does make, uh, actually that's the only thing he makes now, are his custom button plates and adapters are only USB compatible, uh, and you can do it for just about any base on the market. Thrustmaster, Logitech, uh, Fanatic, AccuForce, Bodner, he'll make them for pretty much any base. And he no longer offers this option. And the other option that I'm gonna tell you guys about at the end, uh, Steve Spenceley, he does offer that option and I'll, I'll get to that. Sam will also offer a full package with a rim so you don't have to buy your rim uh, and then send it to Sam. He has rims that he will sell you as part of a complete package, so. Uh, that's a cool way to go about it. I ended up buying this Momo, and I'll tell you about that in a minute as well. So first up, I have the Derek Spear Designs adapter, and it's pretty basic, and it allows you to attach basically any rim that uses that 70 millimeter uh, bolt pattern. You lose your button functionality though, but if you have a button box, or in my case, two, it's not gonna hurt you too bad. Uh, you're also gonna need a shifter to go along with it because, you know, if you're driving, anything that requires shifting, unless you're running an automatic, you're gonna need something to do your shifting. Since I uh, use this for mainly oval uh, or NASCAR racing, 
Uh, I'm honestly not really missing the buttons. I've got the two buttons on the base that I can use. Again, plus all my button box functionality. So I end up using uh, one of the buttons on the base for chat and one for my toe, and then everything else I map on the button boxes. And then I use my TH8A shifter to handle all the shifting duties. So the rim for this one is a 350 millimeter NRG deep dish steering wheel. And if you're looking for one like it and wanna go this route, uh, do a search on eBay and you'll see a lot of options. Uh, and again, it's an NRG and it uses the same drill pattern as Momo's and Sparko's and stuff like that. Uh, and it works great with the DSD adapter. I got mine for $90.98 shipped to my door. It's a quality rim. It's fairly lightweight. Uh, the suede honestly doesn't feel as good as the Momo suede, but it does feel good and does the job. And again, it makes for a great NASCAR style rim. So total for this package, you're looking at about $131 or $130.75 if you got this exact rim shipped to your door. Uh, and again, you're gonna need something to handle the, the button functions, either your keyboard or a button box. And then you're gonna need a shifter. Something that's odd about this adapter is that uh, it doesn't line up the way the stock adapter does. So it ends up uh, screwing in on the adapter here on the threads and it still calibrates just fine, but it doesn't line up on the flat portion like it's supposed to. So that's just, I think, really my only con to, to using that and that you don't have the buttons, but there's other options for that. As a matter of fact, my Sam Maxwell uh, Custom also has the DSD adapter and it does the same thing. Luckily, not in the same exact spot, but um, it doesn't thread like the standard Thrustmaster adapter. I don't know, maybe it's the way that uh, Derek designed these or uh, you know the way that they came out as far as the thread pattern goes. So anyway, next up is the Sim Racing hardware adapter and it comes with all the hardware to mount the aftermarket rim, three longer hex screws and three shorter. The three shorter ones are to attach the rim and the three longer ones are to attach the hub. First thing you need to do is remove the six hex screws from the stock GTE rim. Then you need to remove these two Phillips head screws from the back of the GTE to remove the paddle and button mechanism. And after you do, be careful not to take out the quick release mechanism. And if you do, make sure that you didn't unplug it. And if you did, make sure you plug it back in. I didn't realize it was disconnected and I got it all set up, plugged it in and none of my paddles or buttons were working. So it was just basically working like my Derek Spear Designs wheel. For this one, I recommend getting a rim that's 300 millimeters in diameter or even smaller. This is a 290 millimeter rim. And I ended up starting with the 350 millimeter deep dish, NASCAR style, and the paddles were like way over here. So I, I couldn't even get to them. So that didn't work. Then I got this rim, 320 millimeter, same situation, it worked, but the paddles were just too far away. And I, I have some fairly large hands or long fingers and you know, it still just wasn't working right. I ended up finding this Genesis rim and it was a blem. So basically the yellow stripe, and I'll turn it around here, the yellow stripe was off center a little bit. So I just took a, a Sharpie and blacked it out and it doesn't bother me at all. I don't, I don't look at the rim while I'm driving anyway. Also got that one from eBay. So if you're looking for a rim like that, go, I think uh, without the blem, they're about 130 bucks. So and I think I did a search for 290 millimeter rim. Just look for Genesis suede rim or just do a search for steering wheels and you may find a bunch of different options. So that, that's how I ended up finding them. So I ended up drilling this wheel myself and actually had to switch the way it was supposed to be connected uh, and the way that the sim racing hardware adapter is supposed to be uh, used. So the way it's supposed to be used is that the top screw here, or the, the bottom screw is supposed to be at the top. Um, so if you look at my Momo, it's basically supposed to utilize this, this one and then these two. And due to the odd shape of this hub, it didn't work. Uh, so. And as a matter of fact, while I'm talking about drilling, I ended up using this template that I got uh, from Derek Spear Designs website, and it's a 70 millimeter drill template. And if you don't have a drill press, which I ended up going out and getting to do this, plus I needed it for other stuff around the house, um, 
don't attempt to do this with a regular drill. Otherwise, you could screw up. I mean, I was crapping my pants when I was doing this 220 plus dollar Momo, uh, afraid that I wasn't gonna do it right, and I did. Cause I just took my time, uh, used a center punch, and I used this template uh, to make sure that I got it right. So for this, I used the same template. Again, I had to switch it around, and I had to, I had to end up adding some screws to it. Uh, so this really isn't the best rim to go with for the for this adapter, and I would recommend something like this. But then it gets kind of pricey. Now it is possible to use this a larger rim with that setup, and you're gonna have to do some uh, custom fabrication uh, to get it to work right. And a guy David B on our forums actually has a rim just like this, and did just that. He drilled it out at a bunch of places, uh, extended the buttons drilled a hole for the D-pad so then he could use it on the console, and then he extended the paddles by taking his TX paddles off, drilling, drilling a hole, and then reattaching them to extend the paddles. So it worked, kind of a rig, and I thought about going that route, but I just didn't want to. I wanted to make them more clean looking and, and more of a standard setup. So with that SRH adapter, you're really limited to the rims that you can get, and Sim Racing Hardware should put a disclaimer at their website stating that, because honestly, even though I love all my rims now, it would have saved me from getting some of these. I mean, I should have just realized that those paddles were not gonna be long enough considering the stock GTE rim is only 280, I think 280 millimeters. Uh, so I should have realized that you know, right off the bat, uh, but, uh, and I also got this Momo. I was going to use the Momo Mod 27 with it, but then I ended up buying this adapter, and I'll tell you about that in a second. Um, but the Momo Mod 27 or a Mod 26 would work well with the, the Sim Racing hardware. Uh, but I, I personally don't think that this is the best route to go. Because first you're going to need to take apart a GTE rim, and that's going to cost you about 100 bucks. Then you're going to need to spend another $52 on the adapter from Sim Racing hardware. So now you're up to about 150 bucks and you still don't have a rim. And I did find this Genesis for 80 bucks. So that puts you up to what, 230. Uh, but you're also gonna need the capability to drill it. I was looking around before I bought that drill press and a machine shop, the only one that I could find that would do it was asking about 130 bucks to do it. So now you're up to uh, 230 plus another 130, 360 for this setup, for this with this blem rim. Without the blem, they're about 150 bucks. Or you go to a Momo and you're looking at another 220. So it could get pricey to do this setup. And so, honestly, if you're gonna spend that much, you might as well go to something like this. Again, this is Sam Maxwell Customs. I bought this second hand from a guy named Brad Rossetti off of our forums. I got it for 200 bucks. And I originally got it for this rim. And again, I should have probably done a little more research, but the paddles were, were not long enough for that rim. So that's why I got the, the Momo Mod 27, which is what he was using it with. And I gotta say, I'm really happy I ended up going this route because I love this setup for, uh, I've been running the IndyCar DW12 a lot on iRacing and it's awesome. I'd actually like the paddles to be a little bit longer. I got the 290 millimeter Mod 27. Uh, and I, it, I would imagine these paddles are better with the 270 millimeter version uh, but I got used to it and again I got long fingers so as you can see nice positive click on the paddles all the buttons are nicely placed I like the uh, the encoders and the toggle and this rim is lighter and maybe just the way it's uh, made the materials or something it seems to transmit the force feedback better I love the way this thing feels with that DW12. So the rim I got was 220 bucks or 229 shipped to my door, 200 for the adapter. So now I'm up to I'm up to about 420. You know, and then if I couldn't drill it myself, it would have been over 500 bucks for this. Or you can order one from Sam Maxwell, but again, he doesn't make the ones that are completely or directly compatible with the T500 now. Uh, and he uses a USB connection, so you could get them. Uh, probably a similar setup to this would run you, I'm guessing, between 450 and 500 bucks from Sam. And then he does custom setups to any way you want uh, and with displays and all sorts of stuff. And I'm sure some of his rooms could get up close to a thousand bucks. So, but again, you can use them with any base AccuForce, 
you know, you just got to, to work with Sam on, uh, uh, on getting that set up. And as a matter of fact, I'll have links to all these guys in the description of this show. So if you're interested, uh, you can get in touch with them. So then my last option that I talked about is the, um, I'm using this NRG 320 millimeter rim, also suede wrapped. Got it on eBay, 90.98, just like I did the, uh, the NASCAR style rim. And um, what I'm doing with that is a guy named Steve Spensley, who's uh, actually kind of set up shop in our forums, uh, has been doing some, he started doing custom rims for himself and now he's started a little side business doing this. And he will do a completely uh, Thrustmaster compatible setup. And I actually sent him a circuit board from the TX and they're gonna try to get all that button functionality so that I could have a fully console and PC compatible rim that I'll be able to attach to this. As a matter of fact, I got some images of some uh, uh, potential designs that Steve sent me and I gotta pick one or, or help redesign it. And as you can see, there's four buttons up over here in this part of the rim. That's gonna act as a D-pad. So I should have all the functionality that I have on the PS4, Xbox One, and the PC and I'm gonna be able to use this rim on it, which would be great for project cars, Gran Turismo, Forza. Cause you're driving a lot of street cars and I'd like to have that for the street cars. So, uh, gonna wrap things up and you may be asking, why do all of this when Thrustmaster makes some great aftermarket rims that you can just buy for maybe even cheaper? Well, first of all, none of the rims that Thrustmaster makes have suede, which I love the feel of suede. And sure, over time, they're gonna probably wear, and supposedly you can wear gloves and the oils from your hands could make them wear quicker, but honestly, I don't like wearing gloves when I sim race, and I just like the feel of the suede, so if they wear over time, so be it. I'm just gonna let it go. You know, and the other thing too is I like having different rims for different styles of racing. You know, I've got this for my NASCAR, I've got this for my my IndyCar DW12, I can do formula racing, I can do any style of racing, you know, maybe GT style racing with this. And then I got this for, worked great with the Skip Barber and I racing. Uh, I'm gonna try some dirt rally with it, you know, and basically any type of racing that I can do. And then I'm gonna use this for, for street car style setup. So it's just, man, I gotta say I'm addicted to having these different rims, man. It is really cool to have. And then I have all my Thrustmaster rims too. My my new TM28 leather, um, I got my formula rim. So I have quite a bit of options as far as uh, rims go. So that's gonna wrap things up. Hopefully I've shown you the different options that are available. Uh, so maybe I took some of the guesswork out for you or some of the research that you may have been uh, looking into to doing to do something like this. And uh, from 130 bucks up to you know, this one's gonna be about 500, but you can get into the thousands for some of these setups that you can uh, put together. And again, for just about any base out there. So, again, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Come to our forums, share your custom rims with us in our forums in the uh, custom wheel section. Uh, and, you know, tell your story about how you went about getting yours, who put it together for you, or you did it yourself, whatever. We'd love to see them. ISRTV.com forward slash forums. I'm Darren Ganji for Inside Sim Racing. I'll see you guys next time.